Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today is episode number 20, and we are going to be talking about selenium, and we're going to be answering the question, should you start supplementing with selenium? What is selenium? Why it helps your thyroid? How it can help Hashimoto's? And so on. So let's jump right in. We'll start with just some basics. So what is selenium? Uh, selenium is a trace element, and it's a it's an important complex an important part of many different protein systems in your body okay and so these are called selenoproteins and what your body does is that selenium comes and it forms with these proteins and then these proteins perform certain actions and some of those actions include reducing or they act as antioxidants and some of them help your body catalyze the production of thyroid hormone and well those are the ones we're going to be talking about today but there are other ones as well and they're all throughout your body and so essentially what you have is a trace element which is very important for the function of these proteins and if you don't have a sufficient amount of selenium then these proteins aren't going to work the way that they should all right and then that's going to lead to some of the symptoms and so and it gets really interesting when we talk about selenium deficiency and your thyroid because of the purpose of these or the actions of these these uh, certain proteins that I just mentioned. So let me give you an example. If selen selenium is an important part of the protein complex that helps your body create thyroid hormone, then a deficiency in selenium may result in a reduced amount of thyroid hormone. And likewise, if your if selenium is required for the protective mechanism that your body uses to reduce free radicals inside your cells, if you don't have a sufficient amount of selenium, then there may be more cell damage. And this is how selenium can potentially help not only improve your thyroid, but it, in, in terms of how much hormone you're producing, but it can also potentially help protect your thyroid from damage, especially the kind of damage that occurs in autoimmunity. And so that's why it's really important, and that's why I think it's probably up there in terms of importance with iodine, um, or in terms of, well, I should say it's probably up there with iodine in terms of being one of the most important nutrients for your thyroid, which is why we're talking specifically about it. So let's talk a little bit about um, deficiency and then we'll talk about how you know if, if you have it and then how to supplement and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, let, we'll focus on the deficiency first. Now, selenium deficiency is, I would say, relatively common um, compared to other uh, nutrients. And the reason for that is, well, it's twofold. It has to do with how we get selenium in our bodies and then how our body utilize it. And so selenium is primarily found in our diet. And anything that we are reliant upon to get through our diet or any sort of nutrient, there's a high chance that we could become deficient because our diets have just been um, reducing in terms of their nutrient density and so on. So it's not uncommon that if we normally get nutrients from plants or um, we, we're not consuming a lot of plants and vegetables, so t we tend to not consume the amount that we need. Not only that, but the amount uh, or the concentration of nutrients inside of individual um, food sources depends on the soil. And so if the soil is becoming depleted, then naturally they're going to have fewer um, nutrients inside of them. And so you kind of have a double whammy. And th those two reasons, I think, contribute to why so many people are deficient. Not only that, but certain behaviors, such as smoking and then, of course, poor, poor diet that we talked about, they increase the, uh, the metabolism of selenium and make your body go through it even quicker. And so you can, if you have any sort of those behaviors, plus you're not eating a healthy diet, um, then you're going to run out pretty, pretty quickly. And it seems that certain people are more susceptible to developing thyroid problems as a result of this deficiency. And, and then I, it's worth noting that even though theoretically you can consume all the nutrients you need from food, and ideally that would be the best way, sometimes that just isn't possible. It's not always possible to consume, a, it's not like you're going to consume a healthy diet day in and day out. You're never going to miss a day. You're never going to slip and, you know, practice behaviors which may increase the metabolism of certain nutrients. So even though technically you might or theoretically you might be able to consume enough foods, it's not always practical. So you have to consider that in the back of your head. So let's talk about what you might expect if you have deficiency and how you know if you need a supplement. So first off, uh, and relevant to our discussion, is pretty much any symptom relating to hypothyroidism may be a manifestation of uh, low selenium levels in your body. So this includes an increased risk of Hashimoto's, um, all of the symptoms associated with thyroid dysfunction, including fatigue and hair loss and menstrual you know, disorders and so on. So I, you guys know most of those things, so I'm not going to focus on them. Um, but independent of its 
independent of its um, ability to impact thyroid function and thyroid function cause hair loss, selenium deficiency can independently cause hair loss as well, which is a, it's a big deal for a lot of women who suffer from that. And a lot of women who take thyroid medication think it's going to fix their hair loss, and it never does, may benefit from supplementation with selenium. Um, third, it may weaken your immune system. So that goes back to increasing your risk for developing Hashimoto's, but also for developing, you know, just getting sick constantly. Um, if you're somebody that catches the cold every time it comes around, um, that's, you know, not necessarily a, a sign that everything is working well in your body. Uh, it can cause fatigue. It can cause muscle pain. It can slow down your metabolism. That's probably primarily related to thyroid hormone. And then what's interesting is it can cause or contribute to deficiency in other minerals. So specifically magnesium, zinc, and iron have been well studied. So if you think you have any, of, well, first of all, if you think you have a selenium deficiency and you have any of these symptoms, you're also going to want to check for some of these other ones. So magnesium, zinc, and iron tend to go along with that. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about supplementation. I mentioned before that we get it primarily through our diet. Uh, so meat products, fish, pasta, rice, bread, cereals, beans, and nuts, especially Brazilian nuts, of course. I'm sure you're familiar with that. These all contain high concentrations of selenium. Now, as humans, we need somewhere around 50 to 70 micrograms. That sort of you know, the powers that be, that this is what they recommend that we need. But this doesn't take into account the density of the, the food that you're consuming, the amount of selenium that's in it, the amount that you're metabolizing. And then, of course, it doesn't take into account those who need more because of their medical conditions. And so I say that even though you need 50 to 70 micrograms, a safe dosing for supplementation is somewhere between 50 and 200 micrograms per day. Now, those who need the higher doses, such as, you know, 100 to 200 micrograms, may be those with, you know, severe symptoms of hypothyroidism that don't respond to thyroid medication, and then also those with um, Hashimoto's disease. But you really don't want to go as high as, four, well, you definitely don't want to go higher than 400, otherwise you might start having symptoms of toxicity. So just keep that in mind. More, how do I want to say this? If a little bit works, it doesn't mean a lot is going to work even better. Okay, so there's a, there's diminishing returns as you go up in your dosing of selenium. So for that reason, I like to see it somewhere between 50 and 200. This is just my preference and what I see works among patients. Um, but, you know, everyone's different, so you might have to tweak that a little bit. Um, so that's kind of how, how I recommend it. Uh, you do want to watch out for toxicity because some people are just exquisitely sensitive to it and it is possible to become toxic on selenium. It's not common, but it's, 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 you know, theoretically possible. Um, but studies have shown that even if you consume 200 times the daily dose, um, it's not like it's going to kill you or anything, but you're, you're not going to feel very good. However, there are some people who are just sensitive to it. And if you're taking selenium and you notice diarrhea, fatigue, hair loss, joint pain, nail discoloration, or nausea, those might be signs that you're just sensitive to the amount that you're taking. Doesn't mean you necessarily need to stop, but it's probably a good idea to reduce your dose. So if you're taking 400 mics per day and you're now experiencing some of these things, drop it down to 100 or 200. You don't have to slam it in, you know, at that high dose. So consider that. So I, um, I, I like selenium a lot. Um, I put selenium, about 100 mics, um, in T3 conversion booster um, as selenomethionine. That's that's the version that you want to use, and I think it tends to work better if you combine it with other sup with other um, minerals and, and nutrients as well. The reason for that is that remember when I was saying before that if you have a deficiency in selenium, you also tend to have deficiencies in other things as well. So keep that in mind. You'll probably want to. Um, take selenium in combination with other things as well. And so I just think it makes sense to put them all in there. So iodine, zinc, um, magnesium, things like that. You can take them together. Um, and then that's pretty much it. If you're not sure where to start, you can always do like a 30 to 60 day trial just to see if you get any improvement. But it's definitely worth considering if you have any thyroid related issue because the chance of deficiency is just so high and because of how important selenium is for the production of thyroid hormone and also from for protecting your thyroid cells from damage. Um, due to its uh, capacity to act as an antioxidant. So that's it. If you guys have any questions about selenium, why I recommend um, thyroid patients use selenium you know, so frequently um, and the benefits, let, let me know, leave a comment or a question below and I'll do my best to answer those. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.